let's go back in time. Hi, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader, and these are my top 10 picks of historical novels from 2016. These are just my choices out of what I've read this year, so if you've read other great historical novels, please let me know in the comments below. So historical fiction, I think, is a bit of a flabby term, which is really not um, that useful to readers as it is to uh, booksellers and where to put books on a shelf. If you think about it, every novel is a historical novel, even novels that are set in the future, because what they're doing is capturing an author's uh, thoughts and ideas about society in the time and place that they're writing. But my broad way of thinking about historical fiction is that it's a story set in the distant past. It usually illuminates a new perspective on a time and place that we thought we knew about, or one that maybe we knew little or nothing about before. Two great examples of this are The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis and Rush O by Shirley Barrett. Uh, but I'm not going to discuss uh, these novels in this video uh, because I've already talked about them in the uh, best debut fiction of 2016, but I'll put a link up there um, so you can watch that video if you're interested about hearing about these and uh, other debut titles. So here are 10 magnificent works of fiction from 2016, which I think are really immersive, uh, enjoyable historical novels. Margaret the First by Daniel Dutton, and this is published by Scribe UK. Uh, um, I got sort of inspired by this um, book because the heroine of it, Margaret Cavendish, uh, she wears on her face uh, stars, and so um, I've adorned myself for this uh, video um, with a couple of stars, which I, I rather like. I think I might um, start wearing them more often. I don't know, what do you think? Should I, um, should I walk around with <laughs> stars on my face all the time? Um, why not? <laughs> but she, Margaret Cavendish, uh, was a 17th century English aristocrat. She was an attendant to Queen Henrietta Maria, and she was married to William Cavendish, who was the first Duke of Newcastle upon Tyne. She could have been a passive society wife, but instead she engaged with the uh, scientific, literary, and philosophical ideas of her day by writing her own essays, plays, and bizarre romances. Dutton has written an inventive fictional portrait of this woman by delicately inhabiting her perspective and charting her transformation into becoming an independent thinker. Margaret becomes a notorious figure in her society, um, being branded by some as Mad Madge. In pursuing her writing and ambition to be famous, this woman with a penchant for couture fashion achieved a lasting level of influence. Margaret I is an inspiring and joyous novel that really pays tribute to the complexities of our interior lives. The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi, and this is published in the UK by Michael Joseph. Amidst the dramatic fall of the Second French Empire, a lowly American girl named Liliette travels to Europe and gradually transforms herself into the reigning star of the French opera scene uh, through her very dramatic and unique voice. During her ascension, she becomes the confidant of the most powerful women in the land, the Empress Eugenie, who becomes exiled after the fall of Napoleon III, and the Emperor's mistress, the Comtesse de Castiglioni. Yet someone is scheming to cause Liliette's downfall and expose her humble past. This is an enthralling historical novel of high drama, sumptuous detail, and breathtaking beauty. It intelligently describes the journey of a woman who radically transforms her identity to survive and succeed while wearing a lot of fabulous fashion along the way. The Muse by Jesse Burton, and this is published by Picador. I haven't read uh, Burton's phenomenally successful first novel, uh, but I was really drawn to this book. So this is a novel in two halves. One section deals with a young black woman named Odell who gets a job at an art dealership in London during uh, 1967. But then in alternate chapters, uh, the story jumps back to 1936 to an affluent family who is settled in the Andalusia region of Spain. The daughter of the family, a young woman named Olive, 
is a very talented painter, uh, but she never reveals this talent to her parents, um, even though her father is a very successful art dealer. The two stories of this book gradually reflect upon each other. It's a novel which is full of twists, some of which Burton lets you anticipate, and others which are totally surprising. But that makes this an immensely pleasurable page-turner. I found this a really engaging story uh, about a compelling young writer, a country on the brink of civil war, and a mysterious painting. The Noise of Time by Julian Barnes, and this is published by Jonathan Cape. To what degree is our creativity steered by the society we live in? That's one of the questions at the center of this novel about a talented Russian composer, Dmitri, who lives under a oppressive authoritarian government. Over years of intense scrutiny and being batted around by ruling political parties, uh, his immense talent and passion for music is slowly twisted. It provokes questions about the meaning and value of art when it's trampled on by the overriding political forces that it's produced under. The novel is composed in triptych form, capturing Dimitri's feelings at three very different and uh, critical stages of his life. Spaced in 12-year intervals, it also makes a really fascinating portrait of the Soviet Union over dramatically different stages of its existence. Barnes was inspired by the real-life Russian composer Shashtakovich. The Noise of Time asks, how the pure intentions of music fare when played against the clamorous dogma of reigning ideologies. Elemental by Amanda Curtin, and this is published by Scribe UK. Elemental is a sweeping historical novel that spans 70 years, multiple generations, and two continents. But the story is primarily concentrated through the warmly engaging and Scottish voice of Maggie Tullock. It's the early 1970s, and late in her life, Maggie realizes that uh, she has little to leave for her granddaughter, so she decides to sit down and write the story of her life um, for that granddaughter named Laura. However, some things are very difficult to tell, particularly family secrets that have been buried for decades. But she feels it's vitally important for her granddaughter to understand where she came from. She explains it like this. The story where you come from is real, as real as memory can ever be, and not so easy as fairy tales. The story follows this intelligent girl's journey from a life of brutal hard labor in a rural fishing village to a new life that she builds for herself in Australia. Her tale shows the ways in which we inherit different aspects of our ancestors' lives, not just physical traits and characteristics of their personalities, uh, but their drive to survive. The North Water by Ian McGuire, and this is published by Scribner UK. So, wow, uh, what a brutal but wholly absorbing story this is. It's full of very vivid descriptions that could make me shiver as if I could actually feel I was trapped in a snowstorm, or wrinkle my nose as if I could actually smell the pungency of sailors who are lawn at sea. This dramatic account of a treacherous ocean voyage follows a Yorkshire whaling ship, the Volunteer, as it travels up the coast of Greenland into the Arctic during the mid-1800s. An Irish surgeon named Patrick Sumner, who has a murky past working in the army in Delhi, uh, joins the vessel's crew as they set out to hunt for whales and to skin polar bears. But others on the crew have alternative motives for the voyage, uh, including Captain Brownlee, first mate Cavendish, and a terrifyingly violent harpooner named Henry Drax. As they journey into the treacherous, iceberg-laden seas, Patrick and the other crew face perils both within and outside of the ship. This novel is a gripping adventure story of the highest order, which gives a penetrating look into the darkest acts that man is capable of. The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine, and this is published by Chateau and Windus. This novel primarily takes place in pre and post World War II Switzerland, uh, with a later jump into the more recent past. Given its location, the story gives an interesting slant on the war and the meaning of neutrality 
by focusing on two different families who are affected by the conflict. It's a deeply immersive story about loyalty during times of war, uh, betrayal, family strife, and ambition that made me stay up late at night really longing to read more of the book. The novel centers around a Swiss boy named Gustav whose mother Emily struggles to make ends meet after the early death of his father named Eric. Gustav befriends a new Jewish boy named Anton at his school, and the story charts their friendship over many years. The novel also goes back in time to tell the story of his father Eric, who was an assistant police chief in the tense period leading up to the conflict of war. Like great works of music, uh, the Gustav Sonata has a subtly transformative effect, saying what can't be overtly stated by using a juxtaposition of characters, place, and images. It also made me salivate to try uh, Emily's favorite dessert, which is called Neustort. This is an exceptionally beautiful and accomplished novel, Human Acts by Han Kane, translated by Deborah Smith and this is published by Portobello Books. Quite often when we hear about the atrocities of war, the victims are reduced to anonymous numbers. This novel gradually gives a human face to those who have been lost, as well as paying tribute to the struggles of those who survive. It starts with the immediate aftermath of the 1980 Gwangju Uprising in South Korea, where hundreds of demonstrators protesting the military dictatorship were beaten and killed by government troops. Human Acts traces the survivors of this conflict using a radical style of writing which weaves in and out of their perspectives, uh, that of the dead and also of the reader himself, who becomes inextricably drawn into the reality of their situation. It includes stories of different aspects of the conflict and society uh, through perspectives of a variety of characters, including an editor dealing with state censorship, a factory girl, a prisoner, and a grieving mother who demands official acknowledgement for the loss of her son. Han Kane has recently become well known in the UK and US for her tremendous novel, uh, The Vegetarian, which explores a woman's inwardly blossoming but outwardly deteriorating life through the perspectives of three people close to her. By contrast, Human Acts is simultaneously a novel with a broader political perspective and also more intensely personal for the author herself. It's a startling book filled with significant insights. Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien, and this is published by Granta Books. This book by Canadian writer Tien won this year's Giller Prize, and it was also shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize, and I was really rooting for it to win. The story begins with Li Lin, a girl of Chinese descent whose family live in Canada. Her father, Jane Kai, left in 1989 when she was 10 years old to go to Hong Kong, where he eventually committed suicide. Gradually, she traces the truth about his past and the ones he loved, and it culminates in a description of the historic student protests in Tiananmen Square, which resulted in hundreds, if not thousands, of civilian deaths after martial law was declared. Having experienced the lives of this family through all the political and social changes of the country preceding this tragedy, its meaning is brought much more vividly to life. The story also beautifully shows because a lot of the family are musicians, that there is a special freedom in music to express emotion and family history in a way that words cannot. This ambitious novel spans 50 years of China's history, recounting the heartrending personal impact that political policies had upon this fascinating artistic family. It is a tremendously enlightening and complex story told with great skill and poetic beauty. The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, and this is published by Fleet. This author had the ingenious idea of writing about the Underground Railroad during the time of slavery in America and turning what was historically a network of abolitionists and safe houses 
into a real underground railroad in his story. It's the tale of Cora, who's invited by a fellow slave to escape from the plantation that she was born into and that she has never left before. By entering the train network which runs beneath the earth, she arrives in different states, each of which represent a very different perspective on how America should deal with its history of slavery. Her journey is really emotional and gripping. More than any other book I've read this year, this novel, with its complex ideas about independence and racism, feels pressingly relevant in today's world. It's also an exquisitely written emotional ride. So let me know in the comments below what you think of these books, if you've read any of them, or if you haven't read any of them, which you're most interested in. If you want to know more of my thoughts about any of these titles, click show more for links to my full reviews. Thanks for watching and happy reading everyone!